Hello, today I will be describing the principle of universal generalization as it applies to discrete mathematical proofs. The universal, uh, universal generalization is a rule of inference that states that for all x, p of x is true. Given the premise that p of c is true, where c is a particular member for all elements c in the domain. If this doesn't make sense then, in other words, the rule of inference that shows that if we are able to prove that a statement is true for any instance, then it must be true for all instances. Okay, now to illustrate this concept, let me give you a simple example. Now we all know the famous song by the Beatles, Yellow Submarine. And from that song we can deduce that all beetles live in a yellow submarine. However, that does not imply that all humans live in, a, in the yellow submarine. Therefore, we must choose an arbitrary element, aka humans, in order to avoid this logical fallacy of assuming that all humans live in the submarine if all beetles live in the submarine. Now let's provide you with a discrete mathematical proof to illustrate the concept of universal generalization. Well, we're going to start off with the premise that for all x, p of x implies q of x, and for all x, p of x. Therefore, this we can imply that for all x, q of x. Then we have the premise, which is right here, for all x, p of x implies q of x. We have the premise, which is right here, for all x, p of x. Now, using the principle of universal instantiation, which is necessary to use universal generalization, we can show that p of c, which is an arbitrary element c, implies q of c, arbitrary element c. Also using universal instantiation on this second premise, we can imply p of c. Now using the principle of modulus ponens, where it's p of c, therefore q of c, p of c implies q of c, we can derive the fifth step, which is q of c. And then using universal generalization, the concept we just discussed above, for an arbitrary, if an arbitrary element C is proved to be true, therefore we can generalize the statement and say that for all x, q of x, therefore for all elements in the domain, q of x is true. Okay, if that discrete mathematical proof did not make you understand the concept still, we do have this modern day English proof which explains it, which is pretty self-explanatory. Here it states that any arbitrarily chosen golden retriever is a dog. Therefore, all golden retrievers are dogs. And you can see how the, universe, the principle of universal generalization can be applied here to make sense of the, or to prove that the second statement is true from the first statement. All right, for our existential generalization, the rule is the, uh, it's the rule of inference that states that there is an element C in the domain for which P of C is true if we know that there exists an X for which P of X is true. So it, it shows that if we are able to prove that a statement is true for at least one instance, then the statement must also be true for that instance. Unlike universal generalization, in existential generalization, the C must be um, specific as opposed to arbitrary. Um, so if we go back to the example about the beetles and their yellow submarine, we can see that a particular C, being the beetles, is given that lives in the yellow submarine. And that from that, we can determine that there exists a group of people X that, all, that lives in the submarine. All right, so we have the example there exists an x for which p of x implies q of x, and there exists an x for which p of x is true, which implies there exists an x for which q of x is true. So two premises are there exists an x for which p of x is, implies q of x, and there exists an x for which p of x is true. So using existential instanti instantiation, um, with C values that are specific, but not necessarily known, um, as opposed to arbitrary C values used in universal generalization, um, we can uh, conclude that P of C is true. And using modulus ponens from step three and step four, 
we can conclude QFC, QFC is true. So therefore, using existential generalization, um, there exists an X for which Q of X is true. For a real world example of existential generalization, um, if there is a Sudoku puzzle that is pleasurable, then there exists a puzzle that is pleasurable. Sudoku puzzle is the C value, which is a specific in the domain of X, which is puzzles. Now we will provide an example that will unify both of the principles of existential generalization and universal generalization through an example. In this example, we need to show that the premise, a student in this class has not read the book and everyone in this class has passed the first exam, imply the conclusion, someone who passed the first exam has not read the book. Okay, now let's see how we can take this general statement over here and turn it into logical expressions by which we can prove the statement over here. So we're going to let c of x be x is in the class. And then we're going to let b of x equal to x has read the book. And p of x mean x has passed the first exam. And over here we have the premises that there exists a student x who is both in the class and has not read the book. That's one of the premises. And that for all students in the class, that, a student, that if you are a student in the class, therefore you pass the exam. So what, we can, what the conclusion was over here and what it is in logical form is there exists a student in the class who both has passed the class and not read the book. Okay, let's see how we can go through this using deductive reasoning and steps. So there exists, so for our first uh, statement, we're gonna, which is a premise, we're going to say there exists a student in the class who both is in the class and has not read the book. And then from this, we're going to take an existential instantiation and say that there exists a student A in the class who is both in the class and has not read the book. And then from this step, we can use the principle of simplification to simply say there's a student A in the class. Now let's move on to the second premise, um, which states that for all students in the class, if you're in the class, therefore you pass the exam. From this, we can use a universal instantiation, which says that for an arbitrary student in the class, he has passed the exam. And then we can use the principle of modus ponens by combining the elements of 5 and 3 to deduce that this arbitrary student has passed the exam since he is in the class. Three. And now moving on to step 7, we are going to take a simplification from 2. So 2 is the statement that uh, there exists a student A and a student A in the class and a student A who has not read the book. We simplify this to just simply say there exists a student A who has not read the book. And from this we can conjoin this arbitrary, this arbitrary student A who has passed the class and this student A that exists in the class who has not read the book um, in this statement A. So that's where we're getting this from, from both, uh, from both statements 6 and 7. And then we can formulate statement 9, which basically states that there exists a student X in the class that has both passed the exam and not read the book. Therefore, you get your proof by logical expression, and that will sort of visually show what is written in English right here. We all live in a yellow